Welcome once again to your weekly word. This is Pastor Joshua Goodman. Thanks for joining us again today. Um, we're going to jump right back in to the scripture we've been talking about for the past couple of weeks now. In 1 Kings, boy, we've started in 17, the drought, uh, 18, the, the, the fire falling from heaven, the deluge of rain was pretty much where we finished off last week. Uh, this week, I really want to jump in. Uh, keep in mind that what has taken place, uh, the drought has taken place. Uh, God has now promised to send his rain. Uh, Elijah had his confrontation on Mount Carmel. The pillar of fire fell from heaven, consuming the sacrifice and the altar. All of these things um, we see after this taking place, a, a revival taking place in the land. Elijah saying, uh, don't allow any of the prophets of Baal to escape. He seizes all of them, takes them down to the brook of Kishon, executes all of the, uh, the false prophets of Baal. He goes up and uh, he, he, he tells his prophet to, to, to look out over the sea to see what he sees. And um, after seven times, he sees the uh, cloud the size of a man's hand. And then rain comes. That's where we're going to pick up the story. So basically, and why I say all of that is because we're at a very high point in Elijah's ministry. Man, uh, we see that he's been fed by uh, uh, ravens and drank from the brook. He's seen the miracle of God take place with the widow at Zarephath. He has uh, heard the voice of God speak to him. The, the wicked king uh, uh, obeying the prophet of God, bringing all of Israel together, the fire coming from heaven, the rain. I mean, literally a pinnacle point in Elijah's ministry. And, and we see just this... this uh, interesting turn of events. Let me read it to you in 1 Kings chapter 19. It says this, And Ahab told Jezebel that all Elijah had done, also how he had executed all of the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Like I said, keep in mind, kind of funny, Elijah's at the very pinnacle, called down fire, saw the rain, all of Israel in revival, and all it takes is that evil queen Jezebel to threaten his life. And we read in verse 3, And when he saw that, he arose and he ran for his life. And he went to Beersheba, which is in Judah, and left his servant there. This man had just seen the fire of God fall from heaven. This man had just seen a mighty deluge of rain in the midst of three years of drought. And now we see him fleeing, running for his life in the face of his enemies. My friend, uh, you know, as I, as I read this, I, I can't help but think of... So many times when I've been on top of my game, uh, things just seem like they're going mm, right. They're going, you know, just uh, as close to perfection as they could go. I mean, experiencing heaven and miracles and power and strength. All of this good stuff taking place. And sometimes, if I can admit to you, all it takes is the enemy to come in with one little threat. One little misstep. And goodness sake, it, it can cause everything to just turn upside down. It can cause uh, it, what it feels like your whole life to just be turned upside down, topsy-turvy, knocked around all over the place. Interesting how one minute we can be in this great heavenly spiritual high place and how quickly we can fall to the, the darkest valley, that difficult place, that dark place, that hard place. All it took was one threat from this evil queen, and we see Elijah running for his life. Verse 4 says, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. And this just shows you um, how dark of a place that was. And he sat down under a broom tree, and he prayed that he might die. Have you ever felt that way? Kind of funny, right? You can be in such a spiritually great place, wonderful place, and then the enemy comes in, and in that one instant turns everything around and then suddenly here Elijah is praying that he might die and he said it is enough now Lord take my life for I am no better than my father's 
Heavenly Father, I've had enough of this. I, I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to say. It is enough. I've had enough. Enough is enough is enough. Then it says in verse 5, Then he lay down and he slept under the broom tree. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked there, and by his head was a cake of bread that had been baked on the coals and a jar of water. And he ate and he drank and he lay down. Verse 7, And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And I want us to pay very close attention right here. For the journey is too great for you. You see, even in the midst of the hardship and the difficulty, man, we can, we can just be right on top of the mountain. Then that one little thing come in and ah, turn us, you know, just flip-flop us right over. My friends, we can know that even in our desert, sleeping under the broom tree, praying, God, it is enough, just take me, that the angel of the Lord still comes to us and, and gives us drink and gives us bread, gives us nourishment to sustain us. Because our Heavenly Father realizes that the journey is too great for us. That the journey can be so difficult. You know, perhaps you're on top of the mountain or maybe you're down in the valley today. But you can know that whether up high or down low, somewhere in between, that the journey that God has before you in and of yourself is too great for you. You cannot hope to conquer the mountain on your own. You cannot hope to conquer the valley all by yourself. The journey, the purpose, the plan that God has for you, it is too great for you. Jezebel is going to try to come after you. She's going to try to slay you. She's going to uh, uh, make her idle threats at you. She's going to try to lie to you. And she's going to do whatever she can in her schemes to cause her desired rebellion and, and witchcraft and these things to take place. And this journey, my friend, in and of yourself, you are not big enough to conquer it on your own. But today you can know that God has made provision in your life. He has made a way where there has been no other way. And even in the midst of our difficulty, our, our darkest, lowest time in the valley, when we're saying it is enough, He will send His angels to touch us, to wake us, and say, Here, take, eat, drink, for the journey is too great for you. Now, in the midst of these, these difficult times, in the midst of these hardships, we've got to wake up and recognize the Lord's provision. We've got to be aware of what God is doing and the provision that He has made. Because listen, if Elijah had simply said, No, God, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Let me just go back to sleep. Enough is enough. He would not have ate and he would not have drank. And it could be that the journey would have indeed been too great for him and would have, would have destroyed him. But he recognized the hand of God. He recognized the angel of God. He recognized the provision of God. He eats and he drinks and he gets that supply. He lays down again and he rests. In the midst of that rest, the angel comes and wakes him in again and says, Eat and drink, for the journey is too great for you. What does Elijah do? He gets up. He eats. He drinks. Because he realizes that at the end of the day, he's got to be, he's got to live, my friends, he's got to live in the Lord's provision. And today, we have got to be individuals who begin to know that we're going to be on the mountain sometimes, in the valley other times. Sometimes we're going to be out on the boat and it's going to be crystal clear and beautiful, bringing in a great load of fish. And sometimes there's going to be wind and rain and storms. But in the midst of every circumstance and in the midst of every situation, God has provision for us. We've got to seek out and find that provision. We've got to knock on that door of provision so that it might open up. We've got to ask for that provision, knowing that our Heavenly Father loves us and has already made a way. Will you take hold of the provision that God has provided for you today? You say, Pastor Josh, where do I find this provision? Well, I can tell you. I'm going to let you in on just, just a little secret. The very first place we find that provision is right here. In His Word. My friends, this is the meat that God has for us. This is the bread of life. This is what we nourish ourselves on. 
And then the second place we find that provision is in that place of worship and that place of prayer. That, my friends, brings the anointing. That brings the, the water. That brings that refreshing when we're dry and parched that God has for us. Through the Word and through the worship, God will provide. Let's go ahead and pray today. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we come before you, Lord, and God, right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, we... Uh, in the midst of our difficulty and in the midst of our hardship, whether we're uh, up on top of the mountain or down in the valley, God, let us see your provision, that provision that you have provided, because this journey is indeed, God, it is too great for us. It, it is too difficult. And that plan, that purpose, God, that you have for us, in and of ourself, it's too big for us. So we must be provided for by you in order to accomplish that purpose, in order to accomplish that plan. So, Father, we will, we will eat from your provision. We will, we will drink from that which you have provided and worship God. And in doing so, we know that this journey will not overcome us, but we will overcome it. Father, we thank you. We give you all glory and all honor, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Make sure we do that this week. Trust in, rely upon the provision that God has provided for the journey. Seize that provision, take that provision, eat and drink that provision, and see the journey no longer being able uh, to overcome you, but you overcoming it. This is Pastor Joshua Goodman with your weekly word. Thank you for joining me this week, and I will see you next week.